ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'll be your NegaCube host today. We're doing it right now. We're living the NegaCube dream. I mean, hopefully we are. If my ankles are cold, I can't sleep. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can understand. Sometimes you get those cold ankles, you know? I mean, sometimes you just want the, the draft to pop and it just sits at seven out of eight players and it just never pops. And you're like, hey, bro, can you pop? Man, I'm really excited now because I got I got my my COVID vaccine appointment on Saturday and then I scheduled I got I, I managed to get Michael in for next Tuesday at like 714 a.m. And that's a lot of uh, it's a lot of vaccin vaccinations going on there. Dot -dee -dot. I get my second dose on the seventeenth of April, so in like ten days. When did you get? Did you get? Your, did I know you got your first dose? I feel like you had to have told me. I probably just forgot because I'm a stupid idiot. Oh my god, we waited like 17 minutes and it finally happened. Look, Ridge Scale Tusker again, Mist Raven again. Gad Gadrak the Crown Scourge. Huh, interesting. Skurzdag High Priest is kind of sweet. I kind of just want Creekwood Leech, to be honest. Oh my god, was it you? That's funny. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, Ophelof is that guy that has a different MTGO name than his than his Twitch name, which is which is interesting. I mean, Creekwood Leech leaves us open to Skurzdag, High Priest, and Rage Foreigner, and Ridge Gale Tusker. I'm going to take uh, Kigaro. Kigaro. So I'm I'm down here, and you're up here. Yeah, we're in here. And they're out there, and that's that. Oh, Rolex. Angel of Despair. We can do an Abzan. I really like these these decks with these friggin' big end cards. Yeah, I'm going to take Angel here, and we're going to be Abzanning. Do some illegal draft shenanigans. What does that mean? Is any other adept? Oh, there's a diabolic servitude. Do we want to be reanimating? I think we do. Fuck yeah, we do. Borderland Ranger. I like a Borderland Ranger. Oh, glare of subduel. That's interesting. I think I like Borderland Ranger better. Do I like God Pharaoh's Gift even more? Let's God Pharaoh's Gift. That seems too good to be to be avoided. And I want to presume we're black. We're just abzanning. Doomed Necromancer. I, I bet Doomed Necromancer comes back. This turns every creature into a draw card. There's also Price of Fame, which is just removal. I'm taking the Guardian Project. It also enters the battlefield. Well, I guess a non-token creature. The only creatures that are entering the battlefield are... Uh, I don't know what I'm saying there. Just ignore me. So... Not great for us. I guess we'll just take Terramorphic Expand. Eh, Talisman's probably better than nothing, right? It's still a ramp. It still adds a green for Creekwood Liege. Eh, I think it's fine. Well, 
A while back, I made a handful of sets of non-MTG franchise MTG cards, including Marvel Universe Metallica songs that you made an Army of Darkness dual deck. Ash versus Evil Ash. <laughs> oh, man. Army of Darkness is good stuff. Bruce Campbell is good stuff. I started another rewatch of Breaking Bad. I'm on episode three. Show is unreal good. Oh, that was supposed to be along the lines of the new thing you were doing. Well, what are you going to do about it? Uh, this is actually the good Soren. I like this one a lot. I think I'm going to take this good Soren. If Fertile Ground or Talisman come back, that would be cool. Actually, there's like five cards in this pack that, that I would not mind coming back. Oh, man, I'm just dying. Katie just sent me a message, and it was pretty funny. Oh, Sphere of the Suns has done us well. I've been enjoying Sphere of the Suns. Abyssal Persecutor is cute. Darkport Pathway. Skurzdag High Priest. And Raise Forerunners. Do do that. Do do that. I mean, do we just play Enraged Foreigners in every deck? I mean, with God Pharaoh's Gift and Diabolic Servitude, it seems pretty good. I'm just going to take it. Stitcher Supplier. Hmm. Oh. <sighs> yeah, I'll take Stitcher Supplier. The problem is if we mill like Diabolic Servitude and God Pharaoh's Gift, it's like, all right, well, that sucks. Uh, oh, this is a good pack with nothing we care about in it. Gigantha's actually fine. Not gonna. Not going to play it as a thing, obviously, but. And this costs seven. Gigantic could pay for two of it. So if we just have literally five lands, we can actually go three, one white, one black, play this with the same mana we cast Gigantha with, so. Oh, Chorwit, what up? Got that Doomy boy. Cast him as an elk, man. Is it an elemental elk? It is an elemental elk. Boot dee dot, boot dee dot. Uh, Sundering Growth is good. I like having an answer like that.
Jacanth is actually surprisingly hard to make work, I think. Like, we wouldn't be able to play this, this, or this, because they all have more than one of the same mana color, mana symbol in their cost. Well, I like it that it says sort by for mana cost, and oh, wow, Fertile Ground being last pick is fantastic. And not sort by mana value. That seems like a really easy change that they could make, and they have not done so yet. I like that. I mean, I, I really like, I really like the two drop ramp cards because being able to go from two to four is pretty strong. Arena cube, best of one. Oh my god, there's a slither blade in your deck. It says zero, so maybe that's in the sideboard. Hmm. I don't know how to even process this because I haven't played the arena cube, so I don't know like everything that's in it. Let's see what we got here. Cast down's good. Rishkar is decent, but the odds of him hitting something seems low. Um, I think it actually might just be cast down here. This pack's not super exciting. Underworld Connections is not terrible, I guess. Did you have a Yorion? What was your reason for playing 61 cards? Because I is bad a magic. Okay, well, that's, I guess that's the thing. Hanged Execution are also good, and we can get it back. Yeah, let's get, this is basically a cast down that you can get back with, uh, God Pharaoh's gift. Do 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 do. Sack a creature. Choose a creature or send creatures and then sack a rich creature on your next upkeep. I kinda like Multani. I also kinda like Apex Altasaur. How are we getting these fat idiots in the graveyard though? I guess we'll have to find out. I really like Tender Shoot Dryad. This card's just good if they can't kill it. Let's be Tender Shooting. Palaka Worm and Spitting Image. God, they're just going to give me this card every single draft. 
And they're going to look real stupid every time, I think. I think this has got to be better than freaking Palaka Worm, right? It's just, oh, it's so good every time. I mean, we could use both fixing here as well as ways to put some creatures in the graveyard. <laughs> Excuse me. Twilight Mire. Now we're talking. This doesn't really do what we want it to do because in order to get the creatures in the graveyard, they have to be in play. So we're going to take the Twilight Mire because that seems like a pretty easy pick with a deck like this. <laughs> double black for Angel of Despair, double green for Endrace Foreigners, Apex, Spitting Image, or Creekwood Liege it is pretty helpful. I feel like these picks are taking a while. This is, I, this is taking a while. I don't know what the hold up. Oh, we, we did it. up, <laughs> bop it up. Voyaging Seder. We can also just be casting these things, and I think Voyaging Seder kind of helps that, you know? Also, if we untap the land with Fertile Ground. Chef's Kiss combo. Elvish Piper. Okay, well, that's, that's what you want to be doing. You want to be going from Voyaging Seder to Elvish Piper, and then putting... Angel, Endrays, Altasaur into play. Is there anybody in there? I'd like to know. I don't know what is it is a client. Are you okay? Hello? Hello? Oh, okay. Guess we... Oh, yeah. Catacomb Sifter? That's fantastic. Athreos is cool, but I'd much rather have a three drop that can give us another uh, a sacrifice outlet, a scry outlet. Oh, Bolander, thank you for the raid, buddy. Really appreciate it. Welcome in, everybody. Doing a little Nega Cube here. Um, yeah, none of these things are actually super exciting. Honored Hierarch is decent if we can like get it out on turn one, but if we can't, <sighs> Underworld Connections, I guess, is okay. We can also untap the land with Voyaging Seder. Yeah, I'll take Underworld Connections. I don't know if I want to be playing it, but what are you going to do?
Ooh, Multani came back. That's interesting. So did Skyline? No, we're not playing that color. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a Multani. There's also 21 cards. I'm feeling pretty okay with this 21 going into pack three. Jeez. Did everyone else in the draft go out for cigarettes? I don't know, man. These picks have been taking quite a while. I could see playing Emrakul's Evangel. Sack like Stitcher's Supplier, Doomed Necromancer. Uh, dang it. So close. We'll just take sign and blow. Ah, return a creature from your grave to the battlefield. Sure, I'll take, I'll take false defeat. It's just another reanimate spell. Police main line is actually a dude. Or a lady. It's a thing. It's a good creature is what I'm trying to say. How do you have 40 Metallica cards? <laughs> oh my god. That's kind of ridiculous. I think I can go over here. Oh my god. Okay, Temple, Caves, Champion of Ronus also does what we wanted to do. Oh man, and if, if Druid, Caves, or Temple come back, yeah, we're taking the Champion here. Champion of Ronus is basically just a, a more resilient Elvish Piper where if you get to untap with it, you get to put a big creature into play for free. This deck is looking pretty sweet. We can take Vorinclex again and just not play it. <laughs> uh, Grizzly Salvage is actually kind of sweet here. It lets us put creatures in the graveyard. Unfortunately, we can't get like Diabolic Servitude with it. So if Diabolic Servitude is among those cards, it's just going in the trash can. Yeah, just choose one. Choose choose either the ones you like or choose some at random. Um. I'm going to take Stitcher's Supplier out. I'm just not a fan of the card. Talisman of Impulse can probably go. We already have three. I th think we can take Grizzly Salvage here. I'm also not... I don't. I really don't care about Gigantha that much. It's not like a card I'm super committed to. Black, red, red, green. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I mean, Karuka could draw us cards here. That's pretty cool. Song of the Dryads is a nice removal spell. I also have this in my cube. I'm going to take the Karuga. We have a lot of three and four drops, so...
I like all our remaining cards. Dig in the back of my Dracusith. Miraculous recovery being instant is pretty sweet. Um, hmm. My problem is that we don't have a ton of ways to put things into the graveyard, so we're kind of relying on putting them into play from our hand. And we don't have a ton yet, so I think we're actually just going to go with naturalists here. Because naturalists is a card. Jeez, during over horror. I like Crystalline. I like Crystalline Giant. Actually, this card has been good for me. So I'm going to take that guy. Oh, Quicksilver Amulet. I mean, that does what we want it to do. We can take out Guardian Project, I guess. I mean, also not super sold on Fleece Mainline. I'm tempted to, like, if we get another card that, that lets us cast our spells, like an Edge of Autumn, I can see cutting fleecy boy because I think our goal is to just hit these hit either Quicksilver, Elvish Piper, Soren or Champion Runners or even, even Creekwood Leech both Creekwood Leech and Tender Shoot Dryad are great token creators slam in the back of my Dragula What do we got here? Oh, see the unwritten. See, that's the kind of card we're talking about here. It, if you are among the very young at heart. I might not want Diabolic Servitude now. Like we already have God Pharaoh's Gift and Doom Necromancer. And put the Doom Necromancer inside where it's just more fragile. What can you do? I think Kerwit left. Kerwit went to go to bed. I really, I mean, these, these picks have been taking so fucking long, dude. I've been... This has been the 30, like it's been 30 minutes since we started this draft and like, it's just, everything is taking so long, dude. Neon Tokyo Rain is here. That's all I've ever wanted. Good old NTR. Also, see the unwritten reels at the top eight. If you control the power of four grader, you hit two, right? Two creatures. What a day. What a glorious day. Uh, is it Skyclave Relic? Relic? No, I'm going to take the Boring Clex. I want one more big thing to put into play, I think. I'll take song. I'll take that for a song.
Is there any chance this draft could go any fucking slower? I really don't think so. It's been 31 minutes just for the draft portion. It's kind of unbelievable. Take Thopter Assembly, I guess. Dinrovahor? I'm just going to take that because it's cool. Okay, I think we're almost done. Is there any more card? Any other card we want to cut? Maybe Soren? I think Soren's pretty good. Maybe Hanged Executioner? That's not super exciting. I like all four of our two drops because they all ramp us. <coughs> A guy is Anthem. Sure. Guys, Anthem and Harmonize always look the same to me because of their... Uh, their their planar chaos border. Okay, this is our deck. We have very little, if any, removal. Actually, maybe I like what was the other card? What was the card I took out? Maybe I think I like Executioner over like Conclave Naturalists in the main deck. Imperious perfect. Wow, we only got a Twilight Myris fixing. Oh god, that's pretty brutal. I guess we have Voyaging Seder, Sphere of the Sun's Fertile Ground. So you're saying all Planar Chaos Boris look the same? Yeah, yeah. They're literally designed that way. Isn't that wild? God, we've actually made all of our picks and we just have to wait. This is so brutal. I'm so sorry for you guys watching on YouTube. I guess you can watch it in like two times the speed though. So. Yeah, this is pretty rough. Unfortunately, like none of the lands tabled. I mean, we're mostly green, I guess. And we have Angel of Despair, which we can put into play with both Quicksilver Amulet, Elvish Piper, and Champion of Ronus. Is it possible? If, no, because we're still able to interact. We're still doing things. The internet's obviously fine because you guys can hear me. The client's obviously fine because we can still interact with it. Um, This is actually fine. We need very minimal white. No blue at all. So this is 9, 10 three, four, and then three. Seems fine. It's actually 15. We need one more. Three, four, three, four, four, four. Okay. <laughs> I mean, green is obviously the most important component. And it's likely we're not going to cast this until the very, very late game. We also have Sphere of the Suns for two mana. And we have three ways to just put Angel into play instead, so. Well, the match started quickly, so that's that's good. Oh, snap keep. <laughs> Didn't even get a fantastic look at this hand. I just was like, okay, two lands, a bunch of ramp, and an Elvish Piper, done. All right, and we have perfect mana now. <coughs> I'm going to cast this now because reasons.
Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see. Let's see if this does, if this survives. If it survives the night. If we draw a land, we can go this, this, and still activate this. Oh, it did not survive. <laughs> and the answer is no. I like, I'm just going to play Creekwood Leech, I think. Big old Creek Daddy. Is he dead? Unfortunately, Creek Daddy is not every turn. It's just your turn, so. Wow, they're really good at killing all of my things. See, now I want to just play Soren. Yeah, we're just going to play Soren. <laughs> oh, hold on. I can actually listen to this now because... Kill it with fire, waste your turn. My favorite thing to do is killing their things. Do, 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 do. Kill. That's actually a really good song. I just impressed myself. Wow, they seem to have an answer for every single thing. Now it'll be a land. Oh, it's not a land. I guess we just play Quicksilver Amulet here and see if they have an artifact removal spell. I don't really want to attack into this guy. Eh, sure, why not? Well, because if we end raise Forerunners next turn, we just get way more value out of it. You got it. That's one of your two spells this turn. <coughs> they're gonna get in there huh it's nice to know that they can't cast spells on our turn nice they didn't even flash this back which is weird because, like, that's your second spell, bro. All right. 7 to 21. End raise Forerunners is now lethal. Port of Carful. Sure, that guy's fine. If we hit a land, we can still see the unwritten. If we hit a big threat, we can put it into play. So this is still a 4-4, so see the unwritten still has uh, Ferocious. Okay, dokie. Let's see that unwritten. Oh, wow. Uh, let's go Angel and Shooty Shoot. Let's kill... They just get this back with Port? Do I care about that? Oh, I'm just going to win the game, I guess. <laughs> Okie dokie. <clears throat> All right. Choose a permanent. Cancel or begin? Let's cancel it. Okay. Got him. Um, let's bring in Conclave Naturalists, because that guy would be useful here. <coughs> a good game. For us. For me to poop on.
Okay. Okay. Let's edge of autumn. Your counter list? Oh, I was like, what? What? Ooh. I think we got a black here. One, two. If we hit a land, we can go fertile ground on a land, then crystalline giant, which is pretty cool. And then we can see how big that guy gets. We can also cross our fingers that hexproof is the first mode. Nice. I like that. Okay. So we can either go Creek with Leech or Champion of Ronus. I think we're going to go Fertile on here. Also, if this guy becomes a 4 4, we can see the Unwritten. So that's cool. Hexproof one time. Lifelink. Lifelink is good. I still like Lifelink. I mean, he's not going to survive. So that's a bummer. But, you know. That's fine. Do that. <clears throat> Oof, we get to go again? Okay, okay. Hexproof, 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 hexproof. You always just want hexproof. They're going to ulcerate? <clears throat> okay. You got it. I'm gonna play Creekwood Liege because I think it's got a stronger upside here. What if we spitting image the Creekwood Leash? That seems cool, right? How many leashes can we make? Okie dokie. <laughs> Fantastic. The answer was zero because that's cool. All right, infinite creaky boys. I don't have a way to get back my Creekwood Leash, unfortunately. I can't bounce it. <clears throat> I guess I could kill it somehow. Wow, so every game they're able to ulcerate my first threat, unmake my second threat. Seems good. Seems good, 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 good. Keep at it. You just got to keep at it, you know? Okay. Are they going to radical idea or are they actually? <laughs> of course, you have a counter spell. Why wouldn't you? That's amazing. That's incredible. You're doing so good. <clears throat> so good. Yep. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what our top eight would be. One, 
Oh, can't do it. Cool. Solid. Solid program. Okay, so you can steal my creatures with power two or less. Fascinating. I kind of don't hate Denrova Horror here. What do we cast off of? Fertile Grounds, Fear of the Suns. Or we just put it into play one of those other cards. I'll add one island. <coughs> this is really, we're really mixing it up here and going, going off the deep end, I think, but there's the island. I want to keep this hand. Their deck's not super aggressive, so we'll see. We got five, six, six, seven. Yeah, that's a good, that's a solid start. <clears throat> The odds of this surviving? Close to zero. <clears throat> Something like fertile ground here would be good. Put it on the island. That's like, that is like fertile ground. <clears throat> Man, if Elvis Piper survived, pff, that'd be wild. K R A F T. You got it. I mean, if this dies, the odds are higher that Tender Shoot Dryad doesn't. I don't know if that's any better, but <clears throat> this surviving, being able to put like Angel of Despair into play is pretty good. Okie dokie. <laughs> this is wild. What a wild. If you control four or fewer lands, so you can do that. <clears throat> It did survive. It's true. This is a good looking sapperling token. This almost looks photorealistic. Sarkhan, are you going to sack my tender shoe dryad to make me a, a, a dragon? No, you're going to sack your own to make a dragon. Okay. So we're going to have eight permanents once we make our guy. If we hit a land here, we can actually copy the tender shoe dryad, and then we actually have a pretty decent board there <clears throat> one two three four five this is actually seven if we edge of autumn first we'll have it's coming to play tapped right so we'll have four mana God, i really feel like we just want a spitting image of this one two three four five six the problem is we do have to hit one two three four five six Seven, we'd still only have, we'd, we'd still wouldn't have enough because we'd have too much green. So I think we're definitely playing this. Spitting image, this guy. <clears throat> the 
this seems pretty bananas, right? Either trade Sarkon. No, all right, cool. We just get to eat a Sarkon. Make two five fives. <coughs> seems good. Back in time. I mean, if we can see the unwritten here, uh, and hit like Endray's forerunners, I think we're actually in. <laughs> well, we probably just win, right? Because <clears throat> even if they kill one of these guys, these are still three threes. We're still getting another one. So, but right now they're five fives, and that's pretty good. Oh, okay, we just win the game. So we would have drawn Forest. One, two, three, four. Yep, that's all we needed to see. See the unwritten for Endray's Forerunners. Man, Tender Shoe Dryad's a hell of a card. Gotta pause it because <clears throat> there's been enough delays in this stream so far. All right, let's do it. Uh, snap it off. <clears throat> we don't have any big boys yet, but we do have two lands and a fertile ground, and then one more land gets us to Quicksilver Amulet. Then we just gotta draw more lands and more creatures. It's like we have nothing to go off. We don't have any creatures for these. We don't have any lands for this. We don't have any creatures for this. But you know, just dream. You know. Live the dream. Oh, see, we're we're doing it. <clears throat> Gonna go back in time. I mean, we just top deck like Angel into like Vorinclex, right? Like that's gonna be good. <clears throat> all right so we're still waiting for those big creatures but we're all set up to to once we hit them and then we're going to pass without putting anything on the battlefield and they're going to be like oh good you have zero creatures in hand you stupid idiot and i'm gonna be like it's true however the secret is if we draw one creature they'll never know Unfortunately, we did not. <laughs> so now, we're bound. But do they attack? Oh, that's the question. We could like we could be holding them off, holding them off from attack. So then we can also see the unwritten next turn. Looking at eight cards out of twenty nine is pretty good. Eight, sixteen, twenty four. It's, it's over. 33% of our deck, probably close to 36 is what I want to say. Let's find out. Y is what percentage of X? 8 is what percentage of 29? 27 Point fifty nine percent is that correct? I don't know. Probably. I was wrong. I went the wrong direction. I think. That's good. That's nice. <clears throat> At least we have six lands, so we can see the unwritten. <laughs> no attack. I like it. I like it. Do they go in the graveyard? They go into the graveyard. So if we hit like multiple creatures, we can actually uh, God Pharaoh's gift them next turn. Oh God. Come on one time. Creekwood Liege. Multani? Let's do a Multani.
That's an 8-8, boy. Next turn we can God Pharaoh's Gift, get back Creekwood Leash as a 4-4 that makes 3-3s three every turn. I'm okay with it. Creatures on battlefield on the battlefield get negative one, negative one creatures in the graveyards get plus one, plus one. That's interesting. Hmm. <clears throat> Today, Junior. Why are our opponents taking so long all the time? I'm gonna get back in time. One, two. This guy's got reach and trample? Oh, good. Good gravy. Oh, no attacks? Oh boy, this is good. God Pharaoh's gift. I like the God Pharaoh's gift is choose. So um let's go with Creaky Boy. That's gonna give us a lot of I don't even know if I attack here. They're going to pump this. This is three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's a 10 10. Like, what are you going to do? Yes. Yeah, we knew. Gonna get back in time. So three, four, five, six, seven. Yep, that's good. Oh shit. Rishkar, that's a fine hit. Not super concerned with a Rishkar here. Probably counter on Rishkar, counter on Rada. And you gotta keep something back. Oh, and Strangler Geist? Sure. Don't care about those. Multani also has trample, so like. Yeah, I mean, copy Creekwood Leash, sack a land, put another 4-4 four, four into play. Don't they don't get haste, do they? They do get haste. Wow. So Hanged Executioner is going for the throat as a 4-4. As a four, four. We can also make Elvish Piper a 4-4 four, four if we draw something cool and put something into play with it, but we also have Quicksilver Amulet, so. I think they're trying to figure out what they can attack with here because they have no other plays.
think they're dead if they attack like this, unless they have like a two mana removal spell that deals like four. So seven, eight, nine, we're just gonna take 13 here and go to four. Sure. That is fine. Make a little creaky boy. What? Yeah, of course. What? Oh, Diabolic Servitude is interesting. Okay. 11, 11. So one... What can we get back here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have eight mana. We can actually get Hanged Executioner back and then kill Exile Ronus with it. And I'm pretty sure they're dead if we do that. Right? Yeah, they got one blocker. Yeah, they're just dead. So one, two, three, four. Servitude. I mean, I don't even know if we need to kill... Them. Yeah, we do now, I guess, because... White. And get a big fat dum dum. Let's get Voyaging Seder. I mean, this guy kills them on their own, so. Multani doing some. doing the Lord's work here. Okie dokie. Do, 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 do. So we did see the helm. Do we see anything else that we care about? For Conclave Naturalists? I don't know. <clears throat> did not see a ton of removal, which was nice. Pause on it. Oh, never mind. Uh, Seder into Piper seems good. Seder into Liege also seems good. Oh, no. Big brawlies. Yeah, we're probably going to go Liege first. I guess it depends on if we draw Angel of Angel of Despair. <sighs> this is a decent this is a decent start. I personally would not use it here. You want to use it... Okay. You want to use it in situations where you can't get through. When you're getting through easily, it's like, well, you don't really have to use this here. See, now I'm actually going to play Forerunners because we can get a free... Or uh, play Elvish Piper because we can get a free Endrace Forerunners coming up. Next turn, we can actually play Creekwood Liege and keep up sneaky Forerunners. Sneaky hobbits is she dead? She not dead. Okay. 
She might be dead next turn, but she survived. Yeah, equip that rock. Equip that rock. Ding, 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 ding. I guess we're taking eight here. Maybe nine. Just eight. Unfortunato. The rock is actually surprisingly good because it just insta kills Creekwood Liege. But I guess we can get Creaky Boy back. Correct that whip. This is a complicated situation. Like, if we got to untap, they can kill Piper in response. This is actually great because now we can put Enray's Forerunners into play. It pumps the Creekwood Liege. That was actually pretty good. And if they kill anything, we still have Diabolic Servitude. Yeah, that's fine. Make a worm. Always yes. That's never going to. That's interesting. Wow. I can't believe we just actually kind of turned a corner here. Making a 4-4. Four -four. Always yield to that. And now they actually can't even kill the Tender Shoot Dryad with a rock because they have to kill Creekwood Leech first. <laughs> this is a decent board, man. Wow, what is even happening? Ah, uh, I guess we're winning the game. <laughs> wow. Oh, we would have drawn Karuga, which would have been like one, two, three, four cards. Yeah, that's pretty good. Our deck's kind of sweet. Oh my god, this hand. 8-drop, 8-drop, 9-drop, Sphere of the Suns. I'm going to keep it because we have a lot of outlets to these for these things. <sighs> this is like the riskiest hand we've kept. They did mold a 6 on the play. So if they mold a 6, it's basically us, us keeping the 6 cards, right? Where my Quicksilver Amulet at? That'll do. That's not bad. Gives us a thing to do. Not next turn, but, you know, eventually. Give me an Amulet. Semi. I'll also take Champion of Ronas because I feel like that guy's a little easier to... Uh, a little harder to deal with, let's say, than... Wow, what is happening? They have two cards in hand, plus another Talisman, presumably. Yep, third talisman. Okay. 
One, two, three, four, five. We'll have six mana next turn. Okay. Yep. Multani is only a four, four, though. Let's play a second black. Uh, don't even need to use the sphere, which is nice. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have seven mana here. This is a creature you control, right? Yeah, okay. All right, so we know you have one talisman and one random card in hand. That's okay. That's fine. Okay, so now we know you basically have nothing. Your hand is talisman. That's okay. No cards in hand. I like it. Wow, Altasaur is pretty insane here. We just wipe their board if we actually get to... Uh, um, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I do not think it's worth actually sacking. We're going to have two three threes this turn. Now we're actually going to have a bunch more than that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So next turn, we actually just get to end race four runners, and that should be just incredible. We're not attacking here. So they have like one turn. Otherwise, we just get to slam their butts through their brain. Or if they top deck to counterspell, which would be good. They played a land, so now they're dead. Blue moon. They all got trample. They all got vigilance. All right, let's let's call it a day. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I mean, block there, you take what, uh, 23, and then you can soak up three. Yeah, that's that's good too. All right, well, deck is still good. Let's bring in Naturalists and Sundering Growth because we saw a bunch of stupid things in their deck. Take out Servitude and play like that. I'll keep this. Any land lets us play Crystalline Giant. Any white land lets us also play this guy. And if they literally just go like turn two Signet, then we have an answer. So not like we need an answer, but you know, it's nice to take them off their Signet mana. Oh, I like that even better. I mean, they're 100% going to go Signet because they have 14 Signets in their deck. Fertile Ground? Is it a fertile ground? Okay, let's edge. What's happening right now? Oh, that thing? I'm really glad I kept Sundering Growth now. First strike. I mean, next time we can go Hanged Executioner, Sundering Growth, copy the token, which is pretty good. Draw four. Good grief. All right. Hexproof me one time. Quick Silver Amulet.
I'm just going to tender shoot dry it here. I think it's a little bit stronger. We got eight permanents, so next turn we'll have nine plus whatever we play. Plus they're not playing removal colors. They're literally just blue-green. Yeah, that's fine. Old creaky boy. <clears throat> Lifelink now. Okay. I was hoping for flying, but that's okay. So now the question is hanged executioner into sundering growth, which I think is correct. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they're going to pump twice. Uh, or we can just play Creekwood Leech and start making tokens. We could also play Karuga. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I kind of like Executioner because we can get rid of this next turn, which is pretty good. I think all three of these are fine options. Five cards. <sighs> Sundering growth, this. Populate this guy. I mean, I just, I mean, if we can deny the mana this turn, it's just better, right? So. They're probably going to copy their Palaka Worm, which is good. But I mean, us trading two Sapperlings for a Palaka Worm is not really the end of the world. Yeah. My god, Hunter's being super loud right now. Plus now, Macro Sage lets us draw three cards. It's got to be Activate Mirror Lake, right? Oh, Split Image. That is also good. Primal Might, Fight Our Tender Shoot Dryad. Okay, don't care about that. Come at me, bro. There's no way they attack. If they attack, then we're just killing the both the block worms. What's this guy going to get, I wonder? Um, four, five... Flying? Trample. Not what we're looking for, unfortunately. I think we actually just macro sage here. Like, I want to draw some cards and try to hit NRA's forerunners. Okay, this is big. Huh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Yep. Cool. Well, that was fun. You think you're doing good, and then they play an Altasaur for... 10th, really? Interesting. I guess we're taking 14 here. <laughs> Okie dokie. Cool. Spitting image would have been nice that turn. I mean, I guess if they didn't have nine mana creature, we would have been in better shape. But they did. And we were not. Uh, snap a keeper. All we need is one land. Give me like a fertile ground. Edge of autumn. 
come on, one time ramp spell on turn two, Voyaging Seder. Anything. I'll take anything. Sphere of the Suns, we got like four. That's not that's not even close to it. Well, I mean, they got five mana. We'll have four next turn. Okay, main phase behold is fine with me. They got a name blue. They got a name blue. All right, fingers crossed that this was the correct choice. I don't think it was. I think we're just going to die here. That is not death. It's far from it. If they play another talisman, I don't care about that either. Yep. Oh dear. Is this really going to work? Oh wow. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, Jimbo Jones. I'm just going to play Hanged Executioner. It gives us an answer next turn. We don't need Quicksilver Amulet, and we can see the unwritten next turn anyway. Yeah, you got it. You got it. I'm, I'm, we're trying to hit Enry's Forerunners here. Or there. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> well, um, yeah, let's see the unwritten now, I guess. Oh, Tender Shoot Karuga, huh? Uh, Tender Shoot Karuga draws us like 14 cards, three cards. Multani also very, very good. And we get, oh, we get Spitting Image in the yard too. Oh, that's really good. It's definitely Tender Shoot. Oh, actually putting Multani in the yard is pretty fine. Oh, we just won the game. 3-0 trophied with this sweet deck. Cyclismo, if you're watching on YouTube, we're definitely going to open this treasure chest right now and see what we got. If you guys are also watching on YouTube, definitely consider subscribing or following. It's a great way to support the channel. It's one of the few ways I get to make money and live in a house. Defense Grid, Temple of Triumph, and five play points. Pretty sweet, not too bad. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. Hopefully you enjoyed the Nega Cube, and uh, I'll see you later. Thanks a lot, guys.